Hi there. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at guide rail compatibility just as soon as I finish making this cut. That's how it's supposed to work, right? And welcome back. Yes, who doesn't love the smell of freshly cut guide rail in the morning? Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, and, oh, and towards the end of the video, I'll have a little, uh, a couple of things that may also be of interest to you if you are in the market for some additional rail, so be sure to stay with me. And I mentioned a couple of weeks ago in the Festool or Mafel Big Decision, the plunge saw video, that Festool patented their guide rail design with the cut-through splinter guard in 1981 and as such it kind of became the de facto standard for guide rails. Mafel conspicuously went their own way with their guide rail design whether for reasons of invention and innovation or simply patent avoidance we'll probably never know and they also make the rails for the Bosch plunge saw as well. DeWalt also went their own way with a proprietary guide rail design which uniquely includes a splinter guard on both edges so you can use it without turning the rail around which is handy if you have a long rail in a small space like kitchens or bathrooms. But despite these proprietary designs all plunge saws including Maffel, Bosch and DeWalt will run on Festool rails but the reverse isn't true. Let's have a closer look at this Festool rail design and see what's involved exactly. So the rail is a piece of extruded aluminium, 183 millimetres wide and with a 16 millimetre wide and 6.5 millimetre high rib that the saw locates on that's 119 millimetres away from the right hand rail edge and beneath that rib is a T-slot used principally for clamping. 32 millimetres to the left of the rib is an upward facing T-slot of the same dimensions that can be used for clamps and accessories like rail stops and either side of the rib is a low friction glide strip that the saw base plate bears against. The replaceable splinter guard is attached to the underside of the right hand edge of the rail with double sided tape and overhangs by a few millimetres. It's designed to be trimmed back initially to give a clear indication of the cut line though over time this will be subject to wear so the splinter guard is designed to be easily replaced. Now, as I say, Festool patented this in 1981, so that patent's long expired, but I have to assume that there are some kind of residual intellectual property or design rights that they retain, as no other manufacturer has made a direct copy of this pattern. The closest has been Makita, although they include an anti-tipping lick for their saws, which does get in the way of some Festool accessories like the parallel guides. It has to be said though that if you want 100% compatibility with your existing guide rails or saw then the only way to guarantee that is to buy the same again which may be difficult especially with the entry level saws as few manufacturers seem to be interested in supplying them. There are so many plunge saws and rails available these days that I can't hope to cover them all but let's look quickly at rails from the two entry level supermarket saws Lidl's Parkside and Aldi's Workzone. The parkside rail is slightly narrower than the standard festival rail but the distance between the rib and the splinter guard is pretty consistent between them so they will join together without too many issues that the lack of the second t-slot means that using homemade accessories like rail stops and parallel guides will be more difficult and of course you can only use one joining bar. We also get a slightly odd overhang moving from one to the other though it doesn't seem to get in the way. Now I must give an honourable mention to Lidl as well for being willing to supply additional rails, albeit two 700mm lengths, and you do have to order them from Germany, but they will do it, and at a reasonable price as well. You will, of course, end up with four sections of rails, so three joins to cut a full board, which isn't ideal. Now the work zone rails identical to Shepak rails, well that's a different story, much of which I've told already during the Traxor workshop series and in subsequent videos, but in short the Aldi Shepak rails are much wider overall than the Festool pattern rails, joining them is awkward and even the rib is of a different enough size to cause problems. 
Like the Parkside saw, there's no second T-slot, and if you have the work zone saw, you're kind of stuck with the Shapak rails, and if you do upgrade the saw to something more sophisticated in future, you won't be able to take the rails with you, as they're simply too wide, and when you plunge onto a Shapak rail, you actually hit the rail rather than the splinter guard. So where does that leave us if we're in the market for additional Festool pattern rail? Well, basically my choice would be between rails from Festool, Makita, Evolution and a rail I've only just come across called XL. Let's look at the Festool and Makita first because even between these two top brands there are discrepancies that can cause a few niggles. They are very similar overall anti-tipping lip aside on the Makita but even here, the Makita has a rib that's ever so slightly narrower than the Festool. So while they're joining together well, you're left with a tough choice between having a saw that's snug on the Festool rail and a little bit loose on the Makita, or get it tight on the Makita and have it not run or bind on the Festool. Actually, even that's not really an option as I found it impossible to snug any of my saws onto the Makita rail, apart from my Makita saw. Next, let's take a closer look at the Evolution rails. Evolution caused a bit of a stir when they introduced these, as they do a bundle of two 1400mm rails, clamps, joining bars and a rail bag for less than £70, which is pretty incredible value. But there are a couple of things that I do want to point out to you. First of all, in terms of size, they compare very well to the Festool, with a correct size rib in the right place and the correct width. They do have a T-slot on the left-hand side of the rail, but it's downward facing, which is a shame, as whilst it makes joining the rails a little easier, it means it can't easily be used for accessories. I'm not a fan of the splinter guard, it's a tough white plastic, and I prefer the softer dark rubber strip of the Makita rails, but that's a personal preference, and they can be changed. What can't be readily changed though are the low friction glide strips. In all the other rails these strips are located either side of the main rib, but with the Evolution rails they are both to the right of the rib, between the rib and the splinter guard. Now I've never had a problem with this, but it does mean that if you're in the habit of leaning on the front left of the saw in use, then you could tip the saw over a bit and mess up the cut. Now as I say, I've never found this to be a problem and I've never done this, and when I was trying this out just for the video, I found it did take quite a decent amount of force to achieve this, but it is possible to do, and I was made aware of the issue when I was contacted by a subscriber of mine who'd been having real problems with this. So it is a real thing, and if you've experienced any problems with this whilst using your Evolution rails, then please let me know, as I'd be very interested to hear about the circumstances. And finally, let's take a look at the new to me XL rails. I've got to be honest, I am crushingly disappointed with these because when I bought them, I thought I'd found the one true answer to the budget guide rail blues. The XL guide rail is basically a clone of the Makita rail, right down to the anti-tipping lip and the slightly undersized rib. But I paid just a penny shy of £27, £26.99 for this one and a half metre rail. That is such a bargain, you can pay almost that much for a pair of Makita joining bars. And it really is outstanding value. However, and this is where the crushing disappointment comes in, since I bought this they've gone out of stock at the retailer that I bought from. And the restock price is showing up at £50, almost double, and only a few pounds short of the genuine Makita rail. Honestly, I can't tell you what a disappointment that was because I really thought I'd found a no compromise bargain guide rail that's as close to the Festool pattern rail as you can get. I'll leave a link down below uh, in the video description so you can check back to see when they do come in stock just in case they come back at the old price. But I wouldn't hold my breath. Uh, I mentioned earlier on that I had a couple of things for you at the end of the video. And the first is this. This is a full-size PDF of the uh, Festool guide rail profile. You can download that, print it out, and offer up your rail against it to see if it fits, or maybe cut that out and see if it fits under your saw. That's a free download, and there's a link in the video description to that down below. The other thing is something that I'm doing with my Patreon supporters and that's to have a sample pack of short lengths of guide rail like this uh, from Festool, Makita, Evolution and Excel, all the guide rails that we've seen today basically. And I'm going to post these packs around to anyone who wants to take a closer look at them. There'll be a joining bar or two in there as well so you can join them to your existing rails to see how they work or make sure your saw fits them properly before making a commitment to purchase. This is a free service for my Patreon supporters, UK members only, I'm sorry, as they're just too heavy to make shipping abroad practical. And new Patreon members will need to be on the $5 tier or above to be eligible. 
You'll need to cover onward or return shipping costs as well though. That should only be a few pounds and I'll have a video out on Sunday to explain all the details. So if that's of interest then be sure to join the Patreon party at patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop and make sure you're on the $5 tier or above. And I'd like to take a second just to thank all of my Patreon supporters for their continued support of the channel. And that's it for this video though. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.